Hey everyone, I'm Amanda Niederhauser, AKA Jedi Craft Girl, and I'm a fabric designer with Riley Blake Designs. And I'm excited to be here with you, showing you one of my favorite projects, quilted pot holders. Now you might not be super excited about pot holders because it's just something that you keep in your drawer, but once you see the pot holders I make, you're gonna wanna make some too. My quilted pot holders have a pieced top, and then when you turn them over, I have used a 100% cotton bath towel for the backing and some batting inside. So they're gonna give you this really pliable yet thick feel, which is exactly the kind of pot holders I like to purchase, only they're way cuter and you can have so much more fun than just the boring terry cloth ones you buy at the store. For my pot holders that I'm showing you, I have used Lori Holtz B Vintage, and I love her collection of vintage inspired fabrics. They match perfectly in my kitchen. In fact, I even had a young man coming over for dinner with our family, and he walked into my kitchen and he looked around and he said, wow, your house looks just like my grandma's house. And that was a huge compliment for me because I love all things vintage and old fashioned. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make your own pot holders. And you get to have a lot of fun being creative because you can use any eight inch quilt block for the top or just a piece of fabric, whatever you like. You can get super creative. The samples I'm showing you today, one is a log cabin block. The other is just two and a half inch squares pieced together in a four by four pattern. And the other, look how cute these are. This is actually a cheater print that's included in Lori Holt's B Vintage Fabric Collection. Look at this, this is just the fabric. It comes like this and it actually looks like you pieced this super complicated block and she's used all the fabrics from her collection, only you just cut the square and it looks like you did something amazing. And they're the perfect size for pot holders. So you can totally use that or any other quilt block or fabric you want. So let's get started. So what we're gonna need to start is, I am gonna start with scrap batting. If you collect scraps of batting from quilt projects, this is the best way to get rid of those scraps because you really just need an eight and a half inch piece and you just um, can cut it up like this. So I'm gonna set my batting right there. And then as far as the back for my pot holders, um, I like to find a nice thick bath towel. Make sure it's 100% cotton because you don't want any polyester in there. And then I also pre-wash the towels. Just something about pre-washing a towel just makes it softer and maybe washes off any residue that might be left from the factory. Um, and then I have, I chose a blue and a pink, but you could use white or any color. And again, it gives, having that towel on the back just makes it feel like um, those pot holders you would buy at the store. And it is a little bit more grippy. Um, if you had a cotton and a cotton like this, I feel like my pan might slip. Cotton is very, you know, quilting cotton is very smooth. So I love having this texture. It actually does give it a little more grip that you could grab a big lasagna pan or a turkey roaster or anything and you can feel confident it's not gonna slip out of your hands. So now that we have our, our batting and our toweling, let's talk about our quilt blocks. Um, I'm gonna just show you really quick how to make this log cabin. So, it's a great scrap buster project. So as you can see, I brought some of my scraps and for the center, I'm gonna just grab a two and a half inch square. And then um, you're gonna wanna cut your scraps into one and a half inch pieces. So you can see here, I have one and a half inch strips here. I haven't measured. Um, I'm not worried about the length. I just cut whatever I had up and that's gonna be good enough for me because it's just gonna be a grab and go project. So right now I'm gonna grab a two and a half inch square and maybe grab one of your smaller lengths of one and a half inch strips. I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine. I'm not even gonna worry that it's not the right length. And I'm gonna just sew a quarter inch seam right along the edge there. And then I'm gonna go over to my pressing station gonna heat set the seam 
and then just flip it back. I am gonna cut those strings because they're bothering me. Like that, I'm gonna just use my little clapper. And then I'm gonna just take my rotary cutter and just trim, and I'm gonna use that two and a half inch square as my guide to just trim that extra off. And now I'm gonna continue my log cabin. So now I'm gonna just take another strip I'm going to line it right up like that. Again, I'm not worried about length here because I'm going to just chop it off. And this is super forgiving. So if it ends up being slightly over or under the eight inches, no one's going to know. So if you had a whole bunch, you would just keep feeding them along here. But since we're only making one, I'm just going to trim it off. Okay, I'm gonna go to my, and then you just press out. So you're gonna continue the same method and keep adding one and a half inch strips until you've made it all the way around. And then you're gonna start the next row. I'm gonna give you a little math quiz. Okay, if we want these to finish eight inches plus seam allowance, how many strips will we need on each side if the center block finishes two inches? So these all finish one. So to get eight, we have eight. We're gonna have our two inch and we're gonna add two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inches. So we're gonna do three rings, three log cabin rings around and that's gonna give you eight inches finished. So I'm gonna sew here I'm gonna add the next one on and the next one and then just keep going around and around until I have a block that looks like this. Again, I um, did not care where my colors landed. I know a lot of blo um, log cabins have like the light and then the dark um, and it makes a beautiful pattern, but we're just making a hot pad and I wanted it to look scrappy. So I just grabbed and so I didn't care what was where. I have green here and green here and you know yellow here. Um, but when it's all quilted like this, it just kind of looks fun and scrappy and that's what I was looking for. So you can really have a lot of fun, a lot of no pressure, just grab and go. It's very therapeutic to just you know, throw caution to the wind and let the fabrics fall as they may. All right, so that is the log cabin, how to put that together. And then really quick, this block is just two and a half inch squares um, sewn together. So I have, you would just lay them out like this. Again, I didn't really care. I just maybe didn't have two yellows right next door to each other. And I just grabbed like this. Look how cute that is. I'm not even really planning. I probably wouldn't do that. I would probably, you know, mix those around and put that there and just kind of so nothing's touching each other. And then you're just gonna sew it together in four by four. And that's gonna give you an eight inch finished block. All right, now that we have our tops done, and if you're using the cheater print, you just cut that one out. We're going to layer our towel. So here's our towel. And I want this side, this kind of terry cloth side to be facing out. And then I have my batting and my quilt block or cheater quilt block. And I'm gonna layer it like that. You can use a little spray basting or add a few pins if you want, if you feel like it's gonna shift. Um, I wouldn't get too crazy with the quilting and do like free motion. This is thicker than a quilt. So um, your sewing machine may just wanna do some straight stitching instead of getting too fancy because it is quite bulky, but it's definitely doable with a walking foot. So you can see here, I've quilted this and how I've started is I just straight stitched a diagonal line this way and this way to secure. And then I use this painter's tape and I'm just gonna put it along here and then that's gonna be my next seam guide. And then I'm gonna move it here. And you can use one piece for the whole thing, it keeps sticking. And I'm gonna sew there and like this. And then I'm gonna reverse until I have this fun diamond pattern. And so this worked fine on my walking foot. I wouldn't have got any tighter. I feel like that's gonna to be too much quilting. I feel like this is the right amount of quilting for the thickness 
and what this project requires. And I think it's so cute. I love um, diagonal grid quilting. Okay, so now that our quilting is all finished, what we're gonna do is we're going to trim, um, which does remind me that when you are layering, I'm okay if the batting and the towel is a little bit showing beyond the quilt block because sometimes things tend to shift and if you cut it right at eight and a half inches, which is what this block measures, you might end up with a little more on one side or not enough on the other. So I'm okay with just a rough outline like this with a little hanging over because now we can trim it up. It does help to have a, a new rotary blade because this is thick and if it's dull, you end up sawing it, which just doesn't look pretty. So I have a nice sharp rotary blade and that's gonna just cut that nice and even. I'm just following the edge of my quilt block and I'm gonna just trim this up. Okay, look how cute that is. So to finish, we are going to sew binding on um, all four corners, just like you would a quilt. Okay, here's, here's a few options. You can do your favorite method, which is great. And I actually, on these ones, I hand bound the back. So just like you would, you would sew it on like this and then fold it over and hand tack it down. Now, if you're gonna be laundering these a lot, a lot of uh, washing machine action and a lot of kitchen use, I would maybe sew it on with the machine, which isn't as pretty, I know, but you could sew right in the ditch and catch it and that's gonna really be extra durable if you feel like the hand binding might not stand up to the washing machine. But I was going for looks and it looks so much nicer to do hand binding. Look how cute that is. It just finishes it so perfect. And you only need one with the fabric, two and a half inch strip to do all four corners. So that's nice, you just need one strip and boom, you've got your binding. All right, let's talk about loops and pot holders. When you go to the store and you buy a pot holder, they're always gonna have loops for some reason. I don't know if people think everyone's decorating their kitchen by hanging these up, but when I have a big loop here and I go to get my lasagna out of the oven, sometimes it gets into the pan or it's in the way. So I have chosen to not add loops to mine. One, it's way faster. Two, I don't hang them up. So that is optional. Optional if you want a loop on yours, you just add a little loop um, if you wanna hang it and that's up to you. But I chose not to add the loops. Um, also, um, your binding, you don't need to cut on the bias because everything is straight. Now, a lot of times when you have a pot holder from the store, they have a curved corner. And if you want to make this into a curved corner, maybe you're not into corners and you want points, you would just take like a glass or something round and draw your little curved edge right there and trim that and then you would bind um, and you wouldn't miter the corners. These are mitered because they're pointy. If you wanted curved, you would need to use binding cut on the bias so you would get a nice curve. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're like, oh, I want to have a curve, then you would need to cut your binding on the bias. This binding from Lori is actually printed on the bias, so it's not cut on the bias, which is fun because you only have to cut one strip and not a bunch of diagonals. So I do love that. Okay, something else we need to talk about. I did say you can use any eight and a half inch, eight inch finish quilt block to make the top of your pot holder. Well, let me just caution you on one design you may want to stay away from. Okay, I actually stole this from my mother-in-law's um, drawer. She doesn't know I took it. This was, someone made this for a gift for her. She did not do this, but it's very cute and how sweet to get a Christmas pot holder as a gift. Like that's such a great gift. But what we wanna make sure we avoid, in my opinion, is if we're gonna make a star, we don't want our star to just be on the edge for several reasons. If you do want a star, I would make a six inch star and then I would add just some plain fabric for a border. When you have points of a star budding right up to the binding, 
you run the risk of your binding kind of puffing over and having the appearance of your star points getting cut off. So our, to show you here, this is pretty thick for binding to go around. And you're gonna lose your star points. It's even thicker than this. So if I pull this binding back, you can see her star point is in there. But with the binding kind of puffing over, especially since it's thicker, they're gonna look all cut off. And that's gonna drive me crazy because that's a lot of work and a lot of points and squaring up to just have them lopped off with some binding. Also, if you're thinking, well, I'll just do a scant binding to give it a little more room, you're not gonna wanna do a scant binding with this thick of a pot holder because over time, that's not enough seam and fabric to keep it stable and to keep it from just wearing through and having holes. So. If you wanna make a star, which is so cute, especially for Christmas, I suggest making a smaller one and then just adding a border. Your points will be intact. It'll be so beautiful. Everyone will think you're the most amazing quilter ever. And you won't have gone through all that work only to have them cut off. So that's just a little tip. Um, and that's also why I chose this design because it is easy. I'm not worrying about points. It's a pot holder. I wanted it to be scrappy and fast. And how cute would these be to give friends at Christmas or family members? And if this isn't their vibe, a vintage vibe, you can totally um, use whatever fabrics fit your friend or family member's kitchen. So who wants to make a whole stack of pot holders? I'm so excited to go home and put these in my kitchen and actually use them. Oftentimes we get pot holders and we're like, oh, thanks. I'm never gonna use that. But these are meant to be used. That's why we used the, the nice thick cotton toweling on the back, because it has that feel of, oh, I could totally use that. That will work for me. So I hope you're inspired to make a whole stack of pot holders, to give them to friends, and to get creative with your eight inch blocks that you use on the front. So if you have any questions, you can always visit my blog, jedicraftgirl.com, and make sure to follow me on Instagram, at jedicraftgirl, and definitely tag me in any of your projects, and I will repost them. And I love connecting with you and seeing what you make, and I love the community of quilting where we get to join together and make things and support each other and just have a lot of fun. Anyway, until next time, I'll see you.